Since the NFL Combine wrapped up, I've been messing around with a sort of catch-all indicator of trap players at the wide receiver position and trying to specifically hone in on metrics or data points that could indicate a major lack or failure of something at the college level that then makes it difficult for those receivers to translate to the NFL level. I have very cleverly called this the red flag metric. What this does is it checks for any pitfalls in a player's profile, which I currently have it checking for eight indicators. Number one is no breakout age, which just indicates a general lack of production at the college level. Then no season over two yards per team pass attempt, which again is just more lack of production at the college level. A sub 24 BMI, this is outlier small size in 98% of cases, does not succeed in the NFL. A sub 4.3240 or a 40 over 4.6 seconds. These are outlier speeds that very often do not succeed in the NFL. If you're too slow, then you're gonna have trouble consistently getting open unless you're that insane of a route runner. Or if you're too fast, then the issue is you're most likely underdeveloped as a route runner because you were faster than everybody in college. Your team and your coach knew that and you just ran by everybody with nine routes and didn't really develop a full diverse route tree or footwork or anything like that. Then we have best season was your freshman season, not including injuries on this one. So this just means that you didn't grow as a player in college. So it's kind of bad if your first season was your best season. And then we have PFF slot rate of over 60% throughout your entire career. This indicates heavy slot usage in college, which most likely means that you're a slot wide receiver in the NFL, and that is not conducive to a ton of fantasy points in any given year. Then we have age 24 or older at the NFL draft, and then hitting on fewer than three markers in my marker system, which just overall means that you are a really bad prospect. Now, it is not a death sentence to be categorized in any one of these buckets. There's actually a decent number of receivers who were flagged with any one of these indicators that went on to be great NFL wide receivers like Anquan Bolden, Jarvis Landry, Michael Thomas, Cooper Cup, DK Metcalf, Devonta Smith, and Amon Ross St. Brown. The issue, though, rises when you fit in multiple buckets and have multiple red flags out of these things. Since 2015, out of 20 wide receivers drafted in rounds one through four with multiple red flags on their profile, only one of them has ever posted a top 24 season, and that was Jalen Waddle. Filter down to just receivers drafted in the first two rounds. There are 13 receivers since 2005 with multiple red flags, and again, it is just Jalen Wilder to ever post even one top 24 season in their career. This indicator massively flagged the profiles of Meikle Hardman, Paris Campbell, Van Jefferson, Henry Ruggs, Dwayne Eskridge, Tutu Atwell, Rondell Moore, and Tyquan Thornton, all first or second round picks in the NFL draft in recent years. It also includes Jalen Hyatt from last year's class as well. All of these guys are just massive busts at the NFL level, and some of whom were drafted very highly in rookie drafts throughout the years. Now, unfortunately, there are a few names in the 2024 class that were flagged multiple times, three of whom are some pretty big names that I am actively avoiding in rookie drafts this year. The first of which is Lad McConkey, which if you watched my video from like a month ago on overrated rookies this year, you already know that I was out on Lad McConkey, and then this red flag metric has just confirmed that. The two things he misses on are breakout age and no season over two yards per team pass attempt, both of which to me are like the biggest red flags of the entire list because it shows that you were unable to produce at a high level in college, so how can we expect you to produce in the NFL? Georgia has thrown for over 4,000 passing yards in each of the last two years, and McConkie has never eclipsed nor paced to eclipse 800 receiving yards in a single season. And you might say, well, that's because he's competing with Brock Bowers, to which I say, exactly. He was outproduced by an NFL caliber talent in college, what do you expect is going to happen when he's on an NFL team with NFL caliber talents all around him? This is exactly what happened to Miko Hardman, also coming out of Georgia, who was drafted in round two to the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, almost an ideal situation for any wide receiver coming out of college, but he couldn't even make a mark over Sammy Watkins or Demarcus Robinson, let alone trying to compete with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. I am just so completely out on Lad McConkey that I honestly wish that he gets drafted high so that he pushes a way better player down rookie draft boards that I can scoop up at a much cheaper price. The second player with multiple red flags and was also in my overrated rookies video a month ago is Keon Coleman. Now, Coleman does have a breakout age. He actually broke out at a 20% level at Michigan State and then a 30% level this past year at Florida State. So he does check those boxes over Lad McConkey, but he never posted a season over two yards per team pass attempt and then strangely ran a 4-6-1 at the Combine 
twice. That one is just weird though, considering the GPS timing on him during the gauntlet, but regardless, the straight line speed isn't there for a player who makes a living on big plays down the field. To me, the more concerning flag is the under two yards per team pass attempt. Since 2005, there have been 50 receivers drafted in the NFL that didn't have a season over two yards per team pass attempt. Only one of those 50 receivers ever posted a top 24 season, and that was Stevie Johnson with the Bills nearly 15 years ago. Combine that with the other issue that I raised in my previous video about his dependency on touchdowns in college, and we have another player here that I will be out on in rookie drafts unless he falls into the mid to late second round of rookie drafts because I do see the upside in the type of player that he is, but at his price right now in the late first, early second, I'm out. And the third receiver in the 2024 class with multiple red flags on their profile is combine darling Xavier Worthy. Now, I wasn't out on Worthy before the NFL combine like I already was with Coleman and McConkey, but Worthy's measurables are something to be concerned about as he translates to the NFL. For starters, he's 5'11", 165 pounds, so he comes in at a 23 flat on the BMI chart. For reference, the only wide receiver who's had consistent success in the NFL below a 24 BMI is Heisman winner and top 10 draft pick Devonta Smith. He is the outlier. Mario Manningham did have one top 24 season, but that was it. The other 10 receivers below a 24 BMI never did anything in the NFL. Worthy also gets dinged by his blazing fast 40 yard dash at 4.21, which again, you might view as a positive, but out of 25 receivers since 2005 who have ran a sub 4.32, None of them have produced a single top 24 season. That includes Rondell Moore, John Ross, Henry Ruggs, Curtis Samuel, Will Fuller, and Paris Campbell. Now, going back to what I said at the beginning, the issue here is a lack of development as a route runner because he is faster than everybody on the field. That is why his highlight plays are all deep balls and big play touchdowns. I will say to his credit, I do think that Worthy is a capable route runner with a more diverse route tree than most of the names that I just mentioned above, but he is not a great route runner. Even Lance Zerline notes that separation is inevitable when routes ask less of him. Translation, he can't separate without using his speed. But Worthy also gets flagged for having his best season as a freshman, which was a fantastic season at 18 years old. But again, if your best season was year one, then that shows that you're not growing and improving as a player over your entire college career, or you're not inserting yourself more into your offense to command a larger workload every single year. It's an issue that Rondell Moore had coming out of college, that Denzel Mims essentially had, that Sammy Watkins kind of had, and was also one of the reasons that I was out on Quentin Johnston last year because he could not command more more of an offense over the years with TCU. So if we're talking about Xavier Worthy's upside being basically what Curtis Samuel has done for the past few years, or maybe that one season of Will Fuller on PEDs without DeAndre Hopkins on the Texans, is that really someone that we want to draft with a late first round rookie pick? And that's not even accounting for any potential bump in value if he does get drafted top 20 or top 15 because of his 4-2-1 speed, which we have seen before multiple times in recent history that the NFL just loves these super fast players, and then he gets drafted at the 107-108 in rookie drafts. Nah, I'm good at that price, and y'all can have him. So to sum this all up, I think the point of this entire video is just showcasing how important it is to have a top seven or even a top eight pick to then not have to draft a worthy Coleman or McConkey type in the later first round pick. So if you have a later first round pick, I would be actively looking at trying to trade into Brian Thomas Jr. or Brock Bowers or Roma Dunze or try to get one of the quarterbacks like Drake May, Jane Daniels, or even JJ McCarthy if he does get drafted top 10. I would be actively starting to make those moves now with all of the hype after the combine, but before the NFL draft potentially ruins the outlook on these guys with potentially bad landing spots or before people start to realize that some of these prospects are just fool's gold.